Welcome to the Daily Update, where I'll go over the action in the market for Friday, April 19th, and then we'll see how things look for Monday, April 22nd. Had another down day, had some geopolitical tensions that appeared to be limited, and once that was done and over with, the futures were able to recover and not be down as much by the time the cash session opened. But it was options expiration. We have a pretty strong negative bias and momentum to the market right now. But at the same time, we're wondering, okay, we're seeing some signs of hope here. We were actually mixed in Friday's session. Doesn't mean that we're at any kind of a bottom right now. We could still fall further from here. But we're seeing some signs of hope as we go through the charts. So let's go back and talk about what happened. Right at the open, we did have a lower open, and prices fell below S1 at 49.90. Now we're underneath the 5,000 level, and it found brief support at S2 at 49.68. As the day went on, we rebounded and got back up to S1, and then we fell back down to S2 and even below S2, and we closed right at about S2. So it was almost at the low for the session. That in and of itself is negative, we were down 0.88% on above average volume. Now, some of this, probably all of this, had to do with options expiration. We've been below average for the most part as we've been declining. There's been a few days above average, but typically we've been seeing below average days. Options, you've got a lot of squaring up that need to take place. There were puts and calls that they really expire on Saturday, but the last trading day is Friday that were out of the money, out of the money, out of the money. And then once we dropped below 5,000, suddenly that changed things from being out of the money to in the money and in the money being to out of the money. And that can produce some really big gyrations and movements in the market. Our technicals were negative in the short and intermediate term, but we're oversold on both timeframes. We're still positive in the long term and still holding up for right now. And it's about this shift in inflation and interest rates that maybe the Fed's not going to be able to cut rates. Maybe the economic reports are going to be stronger than expected. And so this Goldilocks approach that had been in the market for quite a while, that's really in question right now. In fact, it's pretty much gone away. And now we're trying to see what is it going to be replaced with. And then, as I mentioned, the geopolitical concerns <clears throat> Israel did have a retaliation against Iran. It was pretty short. It was very limited. And when it was done, it seemed to be over. What we need to watch for now is what happens next. Is this going to escalate into something else? Or was this, okay, you did this to me, I did this to you. And at least for the short future, maybe we're okay for right now. They're never okay but at least somewhat to a settled point. But So we just want to watch those things. You also have Passover coming up in Israel that will be on Monday. It's really weird this year because of leap year. There's some different kinds of ceremonies going on in Israel that could cause some controversy, especially around the Temple Mount. And that always has the potential of escalating the situation that's already tense. Now, hopefully things will just come and go and everybody will do what they want to do. And it may not settle things, but it may not escalate things as well. So some comments. There are Middle East tensions going on and those are going to continue. They've been around for a long time and they will always continue to be there. It just, things climb to a point where they eventually fill over <clears throat> in excuse me <clears throat> where they bleed over into the stock market and that's where it has more of an impact we keep an eye on oil we keep an eye on gold we keep an eye on the dollar and then we can also watch the futures to see if anything's being impacted there especially especially with the s p 500 and nasdaq 100 futures and it was a mixed session. The mega caps just got hammered on Friday. These were the high flyers in late 2023 and into 2024. We've been some seeing some weakness in these areas, and we saw a bit more weakness in Friday's session. I have a number of the Magnificent 7 charts to show you. Tesla, it hit a new 52-week low 
yesterday. So it was down, which means it hit another 52-week low in Friday's session. Oil was up, but not by very much. It, I was watching this after I recorded yesterday's video. I forgot to check oil. I was watching the futures and gold. I was watching that, and I forgot to look at oil. And it was up, but then it came back down. It was it ended up closing higher, but not as high as it was earlier in the session. We closed at $82.22. On a short-term basis, we have our 20-period simple moving average. And these are stocks that are inside of the S&P that are below their 20-period moving average. You'll notice that the 20-period exponential moving average, that's not on the list right now. That's one of the signs of hope that we're seeing. We're actually starting to turn back up with that. Our stochastics, which measures momentum in the short, intermediate, long-term portions of the short term, I know that's confusing, those are looking pretty extreme. The force index, the boom indicator, we're still far away from the 20-period moving average. The slope oscillator, that's our touchiest oscillator, it's still extreme. And then the RSI based on nine periods. Our intermediate term list is, is long right now, so we're pretty much seeing an oversold condition doesn't mean we have to stop here, but we're seeing some signs of hope that I, I hope will be more apparent as I go through the charts. We have the CMB composite, the standard deviations chart, the rate of change going back 20 periods, and then we have the ease of movement. We don't see that on this list very often. It's giving us a pretty negative reading. The S&P and NYSE McClellan oscillators, the PMO studies, the Swinland trading oscillator based on price, the NASDAQ 100 bullish percent index is quite negative right now and the chicken money flow, but we're still extreme positive and the, the 200 came back on the list again. So we have the 150 and 200 period simple moving averages for the S&P 500 that are back to looking extreme again. Now, you could take that as what's going on here, but the fact that these are actually going up as the market's been going down, there's a recalculation going on. And this is suggesting in the long term that the momentum is still there for right now, even though it has been weakening. And then here's our current scenario. It does look like the Fed could be done raising rates in 2024 and possibly even look at rating cut rate rate cutting rates. There we go. But we don't know that right now. If if we get really strong economic reports, that could change this whole done raising rates thing. And that would then change the rest of this scenario too, that, okay, maybe they're not gonna cut rates at all. Maybe they'll have to raise rates. And if they do cut rates, it's a lot less than what the market had been expecting. The dollar was down and interest rates were also down. This did not give support to stocks in Friday's session. We had been at 4.65% after Thursday. We declined to 4.62% after Friday's session. We still have our yield curves that are inverted. Sentiment is ticking down. Now, we're not quite at that extreme negative reading yet, but we're going down, down, down here, where we had been at 34. Now we're coming in at 31. Our trend is negative. The ADX is strengthening. It's above its moving average, and it's above 20. And the red line is on top. So it is a negative trend that we're seeing right now. The bias is negative with the down day, and then the last number of days have been down, so our momentum is negative as well. We didn't have any economic reports. And there's not going to be any economic reports on Monday. So the market's just kind of left to how it feels about things to decide to go up or down. No charts to show you there. Here's a chart put up by Real Investment Advice. This is taking the S&P 500 and then gold. They shift them all the way back to a base of 100 and then go forward from here. And everyone's like, yeah, getting gold, getting gold, great returns, great returns. Well, if you compare the two with each other, as of right now, they're kind of doing about the same. So in gold tends to be a lot more volatile, even more volatile than stocks, which can be volatile at times as well. And then here's, I showed a version of this chart a few sessions ago here. We need to be careful about the first part of May because going back to 1950, Goldman Sachs has found that the first half of May tends to be weak. So we, according to what they've found, now there's other charts that we look at that contradict this, but just be aware that their research suggests we might see some weakness. 
And then this is short interest. I showed this about a week ago or so. And these are just the, the folks that actually short the market. We get the expression, don't sell yourself short. That means that you're talking down about yourself. The idea is that you sell the stock first. Yes, you sell something that you don't own. That happens all the time in the stock market. And it happens in real life, but people have a hard time understanding that. You sell something first with the idea of being able to buy it back later at a lower price. And then the difference between the two is your profit. And they have a percentage measurement that they use here and they call that short interest. Now, if this was quite high, that means that there's a lot of folks out there who would be shorting the market. And that, that carries with it a lot of risk, especially when you have alternatives available. There are inverse ETFs and inverse mutual funds. There are put options that you can use where your investment is limited in those types of investments, where if you just short the market, you virtually have unlimited risk at that point. And so the, the requirements for that are very stringent because people can just, theoretically, the S&P could go up infinitely where when it goes down, it can only go down to zero. We keep an eye on this because this means that there are built-in buyers on the sidelines. And because of those strict requirements that they have, if these short interest positions start going against the people that hold them, they have to get out. They don't have a choice. It's like if you buy a stock on margin and it keeps going down, 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 you, you're going to have to sell that stock whether you want to or not, just to be able to cover the margin you borrowed from your broker. It's a similar type of thing here with short interest, where if the market really starts to go up and these folks are now losing money where they had been making money, they have to get out. Well, they have to buy to get out. And that helps push prices up even more because buy, 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 that's when prices go up. Sell, sell, sell is when prices go down. And currently we're coming in at 1.8%, not a real high percentage rate, but still something that we like to keep an eye on. And then this is looking at investors that say that a recession is unlikely. Now, this is kind of one of those negative things here. A lot of folks are really thinking that we're not going to go into a recession. And this has really been climbing since we bottomed in November of 2022. Then we could be finding some hope here because Jim Cramer says that the market hasn't reached a real bottom yet. And this was put out on Thursday and, uh, I don't think very highly of his interpretation of what's going on in the market. If you watch him, I think it should be viewed as entertainment. And he's been pretty good at being a contrarian indicator himself. So if he thinks we're not at a bottom yet, that might mean we're getting close. All right. Then looking at the cycles where the, we've actually been kind of sticking with this a little bit here, where we've been going down where we might see some kind of a bottom according to these cycles right around the 24th. Well, that's going to be Wednesday of the upcoming week. So we'll see if there's still a little bit more weakness after that. And if these cycles are actually telling us something useful. Here's our interday chart, pretty much down right out of the gate. We did have the overnight events that happened in the Middle East, but the future is pretty much recovered from that. So we had a, a flat to lower open, right, to begin with. And then we just went down. We came down to S1. Looked like maybe we were finding some support there. Nope. We broke down to S2, maybe finding some support there, enough to bounce back up to S1. But then we came right back down to S2, broke below it, and closed just about at S2 for the day. Here's our intraday chart where we look here this is when we saw the real dip right between this pink area and this kind of bluish area that's about when the attacks started to happen in the middle east and you can see where there was a real reaction to that but then we spent the pre-market session pretty much gaining that back we actually went positive before the market opened only to go back negative with the cash session this is another change and this is more negative where we're seeing the red line above the blue line now. That means value is outperforming growth. The blue line had been hanging out on top, even though they're on different scales, even, and both of them have been declining, but now we're seeing where value is starting to outperform. 
And we're seeing a real deterioration here with the growth to value ratio for the S&P. It was holding up earlier on, but it was really falling off. And it just took a big hit in Friday's session. We don't usually see big moves like this. Was it a little overdone? Hmm. All right. End of day. Growth was down massively. Two and a quarter percent where value was actually up. And growth was down for the mid caps where it was up for value. And it was up, but up less for the small caps. So you can see when you see red and green here, like the old Canadian TV show, eh? I, I used to love the red greens prayer for men. I always thought that was interesting. But it was a really mixed day in the market. And our growth to value ratios are taking a hit pretty much across the board. <clears throat> Here with the small caps, it's really going down. The mid caps are going down. And the S&P growth to value ratio is really taking a hit right now. Discretionary is taking a hit when compared to staples, coming back down to the 200-day moving average. Large cap growth, not only did it go below its 20-period moving average, excuse me, it's 50 period moving average. Now we're coming down to the 100 period moving average. And that's what we're starting to see on the S&P charts too. Is that going to provide some kind of support or are we going to keep falling and come all the way down to the 200 day moving average? When we look at large caps versus small caps, we tick down just a little bit with this ratio. Large caps just got hammered on Friday. The Wilshire is continuing to show some weakness overall but it was up in friday session so we saw a broad market measure actually go up on friday and here's our trend looking at the s p where the adx that's the dark black line here it's above the moving average and they're both above 20 so that means that we're in a trend and the red line is on top so that trend is negative and seeing pretty much that same thing with the short-term chart we picked up with volume but again it had more to do with options expiration Sentiment, we are, this This is a number of days old now. We're still seeing this pretty high. In the next reading, this is probably really going to drop. The Elser Index turned down just a little bit after it had been really going up. And we were up with the VIX on the line chart as well as the bar chart. We actually spiked above 20 there for a while, but then ended up coming back down and closing below 20. It's when we get above 20, that's when things really start to look scary. And we look at the volatility of the VIX, where it did pick up with the line chart on bottom, as well as the bar chart. And this is a chart that I've been showing. I also show this in my classes. But I, since it seems to be appropriate to what we're doing right now, we, this just shows what are the returns like based on what the VIX is doing. And when the VIX is really low, we get really good returns. As we go up with the VIX, those returns are positive until we get to 20, and then they end up turning negative. And the VIX itself shows that the momentum continues to be up. And we really spiked up after Thursday with the equity put call ratio, and a lot of that hedging came off. This might have had something to do with options expiration. A lot of short-term put options that were suddenly getting ready to expire we might have seen this real spike up as folks were just hedging for maybe one day and then they had to get rid of those puts. So this came back down. But when we look at the five period, we're rolling over a little bit, but we're getting a pretty high reading right here. This has really been spiking back up lately, which tends to be more negative. And we're still pretty high here with the volatility risk premium, just showing that there's a lot of volatility in the market. If you hadn't already realized that, and we came back down a little bit with this fear gauge. This could be seen as a potential sign of hope. And we ticked down just a little bit with this other fear gauge as well. And I haven't shown this chart in a long time. This is one of the first times in 2024. This is the risk on versus risk off ratio. We've been chopping sideways. Well, we really dropped in Friday's session. Now, this is negative because this means that folks are getting, they're going more risk off right now when this goes down. But did we overdo it? Was there just a lot of action confined to Friday's session that may rebalance itself in the upcoming week? We don't know that yet. These are just questions that we need to ask and be prepared for. Our advanced decline line, we actually turned up based on price and volume, even though the S&P was down. This is a potential sign of hope. We're continuing to decline with our five period new highs, new lows, and 10 period new highs, new lows. But you can see where we actually saw some new highs generated 
in Friday's session. We saw some new lows, but there were actually more new highs than there were new lows. Another potential sign of some internal things happening in the S&P that might give us some hope. We're turning back up a little bit with the advanced decline ratio on a down day. Again, another potential sign of hope. Now, this is not really giving us much hope right now. The accumulation distribution continues to decline below the moving average, and now the red line, the moving average, is starting to decline itself, and this is trying to measure what the smart money is doing. We're getting, we were getting rather extreme with the chicken money flow, and we actually bounced up just a little bit. Another potential sign of hope here. We need to see this continue to go back up and eventually turn positive. This is also another smart money indicator. Chicken oscillator, though, is still comfortably negative and not extreme. We turned back up a little bit with the NYSE accumulative advanced decline line. We came back above the moving average, and we turned up slightly with our regular NYSE advanced decline line. We also turned up a little bit with this other NYSE advanced decline line. Turning back up a little bit with the common stock based on price and volume. And we're going a little... Well, showing a little bit of an improvement here with the NYSE new highs minus the new lows. It's still negative, but it's coming up off of the more negative reading that we had been seeing. We turned up just a little bit, even though the S&P was down. When you look at the cumulative value based on price, turning up a little bit as well as with volume, a teeny tiny glimmer of hope. We look at the S&P 500 highs minus the lows. We're just a little bit positive again here even though it was a down day. We're still looking okay longer term because we're above zero, even though this 50 period moving average has been declining. And we're looking a little bit better here with the 50 period new highs, new lows. It's just turning a little bit more positive. One thing that's more negative is we're seeing the red line, which is, a I know it's a moving average of a moving average, which breaks technical rules all over the place. That's why I do it. And so we're going down just a little bit here with this reading. And we're actually turning up a little bit with the NYSE based on common stock for the advanced decline line studies. We turned up a bit with the S&P, mid caps and small caps. Another slight glimmer of hope. Now this could be taken away with another really solid down move. We can only go with what we're seeing right now. In the short term, we're still looking negative, and we drop below this pivot point. We're well below the 50-period moving average, so the chart itself is not looking all that encouraging. On the bottom, we were above average with volume because it was options expiration. When we measure things based on a trend, here's our 20-period double and triple exponential moving average study. We're declining, and declining pretty quickly. But... We look at our other momentum oscillators. The Stoke RSI is still extreme negative, as is the Williams Percent R, the CCI 14, and the CCI 20. And we're actually turning back up with our exponential moving average based on 20 periods. A down day, and this turned up and is no longer extreme. This is two days now we've seen this. We turned up slightly with the 50 as well as the 200. Again, these are just measurements that are showing us that maybe we've gone down a little too far too fast. We're still extreme though when we look at the boom indicator. We're below this red line, meaning that we're getting far away from it. And that's another oversold condition. We're looking more negative when we look at the 50 period moving average and we're also declining with the 200. We're still extreme with the force index. We've spent three days now, maybe four, hitting this lower Keltner band. And that's rare. We don't usually have that happen very often. Our stochastics, we are extreme negative in the short, intermediate, and now the long term. We're in the minus three channel when we look at our standard deviations chart. So this is extreme negative. Intermediate term, we're dropping below this green line here. Now I put the green line on here. This is the rate of change going back 20 periods. But you notice other times when we came down to this level, sometimes that may not necessarily mark a bottom, but we often see some kind of a bounce coming out of this. CMB composite is still continuing to be extreme negative. The balance of power is declining and not extreme negative. The go no-go system is negative with the smoke on the water bars. And the highest high value, lowest low, we're down below the red line and declining and the midpoint is going over. So this is more negative. 
TTM squeeze continues to fall. If we get down to this black line, that's where we look at it being a possible extreme negative reading. We are declining with our 50 period double and triple exponential moving averages. And the red line is below the blue line showing that the, the strength or the power of the movement is, has been getting stronger. The Connors RSI, don't get to show this one very much. It gyrates all over the place day in and day out, but we're actually seeing an extreme negative, and I forgot to put that on the list. We're wondering, is the 100 period moving average, is it going to mean anything here? We're coming down to it. We held that in Friday's session, didn't quite get to the, to the exponential moving average, but if we see a little bit more weakness, we're going to be watching this in Monday's session to see if that becomes relevant. The equal or ease of movement, we're starting to get extreme. We don't have an extreme reading like we're seeing here on this chart. Now, this chart only goes back a year, but this is getting to a pretty extreme negative reading. And the Arun indicator is continuing to decline. It's below zero. That's because the red line's on top, which are sellers. The green line is declining. That's buyers. Because the green line is below, that means we're negative with the oscillator and it's continuing to decline. Now, this is another thing. This is the second day now with the S&P McClellan oscillator. We've actually been bouncing up. Now, we're still extreme negative, but the fact that this has gone up for two days on down days with the S&P could show some internal strength developing, potential strength. But we're still declining when we look at the summation index based on price and volume. We're bouncing up and actually no longer extreme with the NYSE McClellan oscillator. And it was up slightly in Friday's session. So this is showing some improvement in the broader market. But we're still declining with the summation index for the NYSE based on price and volume. We're starting to turn back up with the Swanland trading oscillator based on price. And we're turning back up based on volume. We had been extreme negative with price. And this is showing some improvement even though the S&P has been declining. Now, on a momentum basis, we're still looking not so good here. The PMO is going down and getting ready, possibly, to cross below this midpoint. We're declining based on price and volume, but we're turning back up with the PMOs that are rising. Again, is there some buying going on inside of the S&P that this is starting to pick up? We're flattening out a little bit with the buy signals, but we're still continuing to go down with the PMOs above zero. We're negative on a trend basis when looking at the elders impulse system for the S&P. We're also negative with the parabolic SAR. We're getting extreme now with the slope oscillator. We've been this way for a couple of days and we're dropping below the midpoint and still negative with the MACD. So all of our oscillators show that the momentum is clearly negative in the short, intermediate and long term. We're wondering if the 100 period moving averages are going to come into play here. And we're dropping a little bit below 50 with our bullish percent index. That's more negative. So this has, there's no real signs of hope coming out in this indicator right now. We're declining with the NYSE bullish percent index. And we are really extreme negative with the bullish percent index for the NASDAQ 100. A more negative reading than we've seen on this chart. We're still declining with the money flow. We're declining and not quite extreme with the ultimate oscillator. We're negative with the vortex. We're declining with the RSI based on 14 periods. We're extreme negative when we look at this based on nine periods. We're below the moving average and declining with on balance volume. We're starting to turn back up with the stocks above their 20 period moving averages. So this is part of this glimmer of hope that I'm that we're potentially seeing here. Now we could go back up, everything could shift, and this could come back down real easily. We're seeing zero confirmation of that based on price. We're just seeing some of our indicators saying that maybe there's a chance that we might find some kind of a bottom around about now. With the 50 period moving average study also turning back up, it's still below 50 and turning back up with the 100 as well as the 200. So signs of hope here. The copy curve, though, still shows that the momentum is negative. We're still going lower with the Sean trend meter. We're coming down to the bottom end of this green cloud with the Ichimoku cloud. Will this end up providing some kind of support? And we want to keep an eye on these FIB retracements. If we really start rip roaring down here, we're looking at the 4823 level for that. 
And standard deviation continues to be quite high. As we've really been going down, that just means that the speed has really picked up. We're negative when we look at the trend with the hike in Ashi, with the Keggy chart, the Ranko chart, the three-line break chart, and we had another zero drawn here in here with the point and figure chart. No signal has been generated, but anytime you see O's in here, that means that we're going down. Long-term, we now closed out the week, and we fell below this R1 level. This had been really something that we were, at least I was focused on, the fact that we closed below this and sliced through it pretty heavily, this may end up becoming resistance if we start to go back up. And we're actually turning up with our 150 and 200 period moving averages. And we're negative in the short term. I'm more negative in the intermediate term where they're positive here. We're negative with bonds based on price, negative in the short term with stocks, recently turned positive with commodities in the long term. No change here with the decision point scorecard. An awful lot of red here. The S&P went below 5,000. Gold, I mean, yeah, it's above 2,400 now. So there were some positive things that did happen. The equal weight is actually, it outperformed. So it's turning back up where the S&P was down because the mega caps really got hit. So we're seeing this ratio really dropping off in Friday's session. The Dow's hanging in there. We're just a little bit above this S2 pivot point here, and we've been chopping more or less sideways. So this has been hanging in there better. And we still remain neutral with the diamonds when looking at the elders impulse system. We're just seeing really big time downward movement here with the NASDAQ. We dropped below this pivot point and we're just kind of falling. We'll have to see are, are one of these other previous lows going to end up providing some kind of support or are we going to end up coming down to the 200 day moving average? Also really dropping with the NASDAQ 100 right now. And we're negative with the QQQs when looking at the elder impulse system, the momentum for the NASDAQ 100 is negative. And we're seeing a potential, not really a death cross. I mean, maybe you could say that. It's the 20 period moving average. It's in danger of crossing below the 50 period moving average. That's more of a, what do they call it? A silver cross? Anyway, a death cross is when a 50 period moving average crosses below a 200. And then there's some other fancy name, maybe a half death, coma cross. I don't know what you call that, but we want to keep an eye on this. That's showing that the trend is, is weakening here. The small caps were actually up on the day and came back above this S2 level, never came down to its 200-day moving average. Turning back over to neutral with the Elder's Impulse System for the small caps. When we look at the Russell 2000 small caps, turning up after being extreme with the RSI, we still are looking pretty bad here when we look, just look at the bars themselves. We're above the 200 period moving average, but still below the 50. The momentum continues to be negative. The mid caps came down to this S2 level and this support is actually holding, even though we're still underneath the 50 period moving average. We switched over to neutral with the elders impulse system for the mid caps. Apple was down over a percent and is in a downtrend. Tesla, which has been in a downtrend, dropped another 1.92%. NVIDIA dropped below its 50-day moving average. And see, in here, you know, you had the earnings report that came out, and then people were downloading apps onto their phones, didn't know anything about NVIDIA, just saw a way to make some easy money, and they're buying whatever they can in NVIDIA, and notice what it's been doing since that time. It kind of developed into a bit of a mania there. Well, this is washing a lot of those folks out who are getting really disillusioned with things as we're seeing some more weakness in NVIDIA. If, according to this, it fell 10%. My goodness. Microsoft also dropping below its 50-day moving average, and it was down one and a quarter percent. Meta is also dropping below its 50-day moving average. Amazon is dropping below its 50-day moving average. So this Magnificent 7, yeah, we're seeing some weakness here. Is it going to continue? Are we just getting started? Or is this just enough to shake out a lot of the weaker hands before some buying really comes back in. The FANG index really dropped off as well. We're still in a longer term uptrend, but this was down 3.75%. The financial sector was up and is now coming back up to its 50-day moving average. 
the dollar was down slightly here it says it's unchanged but it ended up being down just a little bit and we're kind of still showing some recent strength in the dollar which has been pressuring stocks oil closed at 82.22 and when we look at the s p 500 and compare it with world stocks the shorter term relationship it is getting stronger but we're still pretty much flat to slightly declining with the longer term relationship we're seeing some broad weakness here with the total u.s stock etf it was down 0.78 percent and then we were down with the 10-year yield we were up with the 10-year based on price and we're not seeing really any improvement here this is not signs of hope that we're seeing when we look at the Qs compared to the s p discretionary is really underperforming the s p and large cap growth is underperforming large cap value so the large caps, mid caps, and small caps, when we compare growth to value, we're not getting an awful lot of hope in that area currently. We're dropping below 50 with our 10-day average of the S&P 500 highs minus the lows. And we're actually going back up just a little bit with our 19-day exponential moving average of the advanced decline ratio based on price as well as volume. That's a teeny tiny bit of hope. And we're still declining, though. When we look at the broad market, we take a five-period moving average of the highs minus the lows. It's still declining below zero. So what's our outlook for Monday? We're still negative in the short and intermediate term, and we're below that support, which mainly was the 50-day moving average. Now we're possibly challenging the 100-period moving average. And I just put this on here just because we're seeing some things bounce up a little bit. I'm not picking any kind of a bounce scenario yet i'm just trying to point out things that we need to keep an eye on and if we see that then confirmed by price then we can start to develop a scenario that goes with that so there could be some potential signs of bottoming here but they could go away really quickly friday was options expiration and that gave rise to some of these bounces that we're seeing and that that could get wiped out really fast we don't have any economic reports on Monday, and then we want to keep an eye on the geopolitical events, specifically in the Middle East. Here's the upcoming calendar for the upcoming week. Uh, let's see. The big one, we're going to get durable goods on Wednesday. Um, the first reading of GDP will be coming out on Thursday for the second quarter. And then we're going to get the big PCE core report on Friday. That's a really big inflation report. And so there's nothing marked here on this chart here. Seasonally, we're positive across the board. So we have that going for us for the April 22nd. And we do see a little bit of a bounce here during an election year when looking at the green dash line. And we're actually go performing worse now when we compare it to the top first quarter during an election year. Maybe we've gone down a little far, a little fast and might see some kind of a bounce out of that. Or we could still continue. Monday is the most positive day of the week. And now that we're beyond the midpoint of April, we tend to see some positive seasonality. And But now we're coming into more of the weaker time that will last up until the 24th, which will be Wednesday, according to Tom Bally's research, before we see some positive action going into the end of the month. The warning signs, our equity put call ratio is still going up. And now that probably acted a little weird on Friday because it was options expiration. The parabolic SCR is negative. The bullish percent index is below 50 and declining. We're extreme negative with the bullish percent index for the NASDAQ 100. The chicken money flow is still extreme. The oscillator itself is negative. The ultimate oscillator, copic curve, and vortex. Those are all negative now. Our oscillators are negative. And we're below short, intermediate, and even long-term support. And the momentum for the NASDAQ 100 is negative. Not a real long list of positive things here. We're still looking okay with our long-term trend. And the financial sector, which was up in Friday's session, it's still positive and trying to come back up to its 50-day moving average. Our conclusion, we're negative in the short and intermediate term. We're below the support that we had been watching. We're now going to start to see, are there some signs of bottoming? They could quickly go away, too. In the short term, we're negative but oversold. We're also becoming more oversold in the intermediate term, but we're still negative. In the long term, we continue to be positive. Thank you. I hope you have a very good weekend, and I will talk to you in the next video.